Here, we find the major concern of why this engine's replaced. Now, rod knock is going to be something related to the connecting rod of your engine. This is inside your cylinder, there's your piston. This is your crankshaft. Now what rod knock is, is you have your connecting rod that attaches to your crankshaft like this and bolts on. Now, as this spins around, it's going up and down the cylinder, up and down, up and down, up and down. Now, if you have any space between the cap of the rod and the thing, it will move inside like this. And so what you're hearing with rod knock is this moving around in there. Now this could be a result of an issue with your bearings and your connecting rods, or maybe something is damaged, one of these connecting rod bolts broke, which is causing it to loosen up or something like that. Uh, regardless, that's what the noise we're about to show you right now. Rod knock is something that you would get uh, if you had a failing component in your engine. If you did run your engine low on oil, you can do what's called spin a bearing. So these bearings inside here uh, can be spun because they don't have enough oil in there, which creates too much friction, and it will cause it to spin out of its location, allowing a gap in between these two, which is what you hear knocking around. So most time a spun bearing comes from low oil or a very poorly maintained engine. Uh, it's always hard to know. It could just be a, an anomaly of a failure, but generally it's gonna be one of the, the first two. Uh, by the way, this is a VR6 crankshaft. That is not a VR6 engine. This is a six cylinder uh, VR, which stands for virtual reality six cylinder. Except the Oasis. Just so you know, this is actually what a connecting rod bearing looks like. It sits in there like so, and they kind of uh, have a notch that keeps them in place, which is why you can spin them, is because there's really nothing that holds them in place other than these, this little locating notch and essentially the tension that holds it in place. Um, and that is why you can spin them if they get too much friction. Change your oil, kids. First thing I'm gonna do this, as you can see, this engine is partially disassembled, but you do need some special tools. We sell them in a couple different ways. Uh, we have a full kit that has this stuff in there and then, and then we sell some of the stuff individually too. So this is called, uh, often called a spool valve by a, lot, by a lot of VW and Audi techs. This is what controls the variable valve timing. You need this guy and there's different ones depending on which TSI engine you have. Also MQB engines have one of these as well and you need this special tool to break it loose. Important fact about these is these are reverse threads. So when you go to take this out, other than making a mess with oil like I'm about to do, that you spin it out in the reverse way. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> oh, we're gonna make a huge mess. This is a crank counter hole tool. This big guy comes in a kit or we also sell one with, that attaches to a half inch ratchet. Uh, usually you're gonna need a friend to help you with this because, because you gotta break it loose and it requires a lot of torque. Uh, also, you should replace this crank bolt every time you take it off. It's a one-time use guy. It smells quite terrible. What does that smell? That is what uh, I would describe as a burnt engine smell. If you're not familiar with burnt engine smell, yeah, burnt engine is a pretty specific smell. It kind of smells like burnt oil, but not really. It's much worse than that. So cam bridges, as we've covered in many other TSI videos, are the ones that have this oil screen that goes night, night. And as the, you can see, this one is also missing. In our particular instance, there's no screen. Now you can see, usually those screens will get stuck inside. So you may be able to find them located in some places. In our case, we don't see it. Now we're gonna remove our Lowy timing cover. These guys are made of steel. As you can see, this one was leaking as they may uh, every now and again, but you gotta pry these guys off pretty good. This one's been off before I can tell you because the RTV on here does not appear to be factory. Oftentimes you gotta replace these because there's not really a great way to remove them without prying on them like that. As you can hear it pop and there she goes. Uh, in this particular case, we have three chains, but we're only gonna be dealing with two chains. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, okay, so chains on TSI engines have problems. They stretch over time. It, this is the chain that stretches the big one uh, predominantly, but usually when we recommend them, I recommend replacing both the balance shaft chain and the main chain, just because the amount of work that it takes to get to them is very similar. This chain doesn't really have a lot of torque on it, the oil pump chain. So it's not really something we usually recommend dealing with. Not oh, really worth messing with. Tensioners, as you can see, this car actually has the updated tensioner on it already. Um, and so we're gonna take this stuff off. Uh, if you want some more details, Charles and I actually made a video about fixing a Tiguan that had a blown up uh, cylinder head. It was a Jalopnik uh, writer's car or the editor's car. And we went over a bunch of stuff around TSI chains. It's not really necessarily a DIY, but we do have a DIY, a written DIY that actually explains all this stuff and the torque specs for this. Um, make sure you check out that video. We covered a lot more stuff in there as well. And I would say it's just generally an entertaining video. Also fun fact about these is they use this guy, which is a gear that mounts the crankshaft. And now what keeps this in place is just these little splines here. And they have a one specific tooth that is lines it up properly. Now, if, if you have it off and you think you have it on, it will just go like this Whee! and slip around. So that's pretty important when you're tightening this down, there's an extra notch on there. So again, yeah, this guy. Uh, boop. Uh, you can't really use those cams, especially not the intake cam because it has that adjuster on it, this guy. And that is oil driven. And, and if it had all the oil issues that it did have, it's probably not gonna function great with the oil problems. So, it doesn't really, no, yeah, it does. It smells burnt. The dog's burnt! You're cooking in a burnt pan, you f***ing Yeah, the head is ready to come off. Take the head bolts off. I took off all the head bolts while Nathan was screwing around. I was changing the camera battery. Okay, he said, he said he was changing the battery. <laughs> we should be able to just pull this up and out. It's probably gonna make a mess. And here we go. Making a mess is my middle name. There you go. Ooh, what's that? Yeah, what is that? It's not, it's not a tumor can't turn the crankshaft currently so this is really annoying me i really i really made i've made a strategic error here here i am again i'm really struggling to get a bolt threaded in it's quite a challenge and the top what is that oh that's from one of the intake uh the runner guides Somewhere along the way, the disassembly, it, it broke off. Where were the dam? Oh, there's a good example. There's a good example of a water pump. This is exactly what happens when you let your oil leak too much. That means this water pump has been leaking for some time. See this rubber thing right there? Oh, hold on, let me get a screwdriver. Boop, boop, boop. That's your water pump gasket. This used to be a whole piece that goes all the way across, but when you let the oil leak onto here, it makes this gasket swell. And when that gasket swells, it breaks out this part of the the water pump housing. And there you go. Then you have an extremely le uh, significant leak, which is why you can't let your engine leak, which is this engine has a bunch of leaks. It's a, it's a leaky one. Uh, there's no damage to the pistons. The cylinder walls appear to be in okay shape. No major scoring or anything that I can see. We're about to make a mess. This is why. We got no choice. This is the options we got. Either make a mess or make a mess. The issue you have with these circumstances is that this cylinder head, because of the oil situation with it, cylinder head functions as the cam journals. What that is, is all these rockers fell out. Um, <laughs> what that is, is right here. Now all these places where the camshaft sits are the cam journals. Now these are not really something that you can fix if they get damaged. You could have a machine shop try to insert something, whatever, but due to the cost of them, it doesn't really make sense. Because of the oil situation with this car, it was very low on oil. Even though they don't look majorly scored or anything, could have some questionable wear uh, in terms of how, how viable they are, which is why with stuff like this, it's oftentimes better off to just put a used engine in that's a known good instead of one that's been run like that. All right, now here we find the major concern of why this engine is replaced. If you take a look there, you'll find what appears to be metal. This is probably all bearing material. 
based on how thin it is, because it's not really like, it's not chunks. So this is very thin like flakes. As the oil pressure either dropped or, or there wasn't enough in there, it slowly started to shave off little pieces of the bearing over and over and over again. And then we eject Oceto cause them right into the oil pan. I bet, I bet you were thinking up until now, that engine is fine. I don't know why you guys even replaced this engine. You might have even typed it in the comments already and now you're just keyboard warrior, like judo chop deleting it. I think people are commenting as to why there are long boards behind you. Yeah, well, people like skateboard here, that's why. Do you, do you shred, Paul? I don't shred. The only thing I shred is cheese if I'm making tacos. <laughs> that's why I'll do that. I don't make tacos. I do eat tacos though, they're delicious. Right now we're looking at this oil pump. This is in our oil pump pickup. I am not positive what that is actually. It looks like it might be from one of the rockers. Now we're gonna take off this guy, the baffle. I hope you brought your, your mud and boots because this is about to get na nasty. My Crocs? I hope you brought your Crocs. Okay, take this oil pump out. Okay, it maybe, let's, let's now find out before we get any further, if we have any items inside of our oil pump. Let's see, what do we got? Nothing appears to be majorly wrong with this oil pump. Now I'm gonna take these triple squares off this upper oil pan and we'll get ready to remove that. That makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this. I'm trying to make it as little of a mess as possible. As possible. Where's the damage at? Wow, that's a lot of damage. I don't see any damage. Um, well, this, I believe we've located our problem. Where's the problem? Well, if you look close, you'll notice one of these things is not like the other. What do you see? What do you notice about this, Nathan? Apparently he notice doesn't, Nathan doesn't notice anything. I think it's a different color, Paul. It's f***ing burned. It, it is, <laughs> it looks like it's been set on fire. <laughs> if you look here, you can see numbers on there. You'll see a 44 and then there's some like letters and stuff there and it's, and it's very goldish in color. This one is, looks like it's been torched straight down the middle. That how would happen because the bearing isn't there anymore. And so it created extreme amounts of heat underneath of there. You'll notice this situation, we have loosened nothing yet. And this is where the rod knock was. See that? If you'll notice while your engine's running, that is not supposed to move at all. If you look here, that one doesn't move. This one. Oh, nice. Does that. Why don't you just impact them off? I could, but it's not really the right way to do it. Oops. Not that we've done anything right the whole way. It's just, <laughs> it's just a habit. If I'm inside of an engine, I don't use impacts. Really, I don't have a good explanation for it other than that. I also I would, if anything is messed up in there, I'd like to make, make sure it was something that was natural from the thing and not because I beat the shit out of it. Okay, there she blows. What? There is no bearing in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there's no bearing, is there? Is there anything to take off there? Let's take a look. It does not appear as though there's any bearing in there. So if you look here, there is some of a bearing right there. So just for context, let's look. This is what a bearing looks like. And that's what is left of the bearing. It's just gonna fall out, isn't it? Yeah, kinda. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's okay. Both the bearings have alleviated themselves from their position. So, spun bearing. If he continues to drive this uh, without us replacing this engine, eventually what would happen is this would have, it would have created enough heat inside of this entire thing that something would have let loose. Probably the rod bolts uh, themselves would have broken. And then what happens in that circumstance is this guy ends up getting cocked sideways Let's just, let's just theoretically say the back side of this falls off and then it falls off this crankshaft and as it continues to spin around, it jams into it and it'll eject those Cedo cuz right out the front of the block here. <laughs> just like this, bow, see ya. 
There is the bearing. Oh. Well, yeah, that's, that's a piece of it. Oh, it's actually it's actually both bearings. <laughs> so there's two of them, they, they were on top of each other. So we have our bearings from our bad cylinder. This is a rod knock cylinder. Here is a bearing from a good cylinder or good-ish. Uh, it does have some wear there. But you can see that there is a drastic difference. This one looks like it's been feathering it and it's a problem. It's mushed pretty good. So that's what happens from that rod just constantly beating that thing like over and over and over again, it's completely smushed. You can look at it side by side. The thickness of them is quite a bit different and they are completely chewed up to pieces. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the rest of these rods and then we're gonna pull this crank out to see if the main bearings have any damage from having all the metal sent through this thing. This smells real bad, this stinks. It does smell really bad. Yeah. Oh it's, my God, it smells <laughs> It's quite terrible. How are you bearing that? I can barely bear it. <laughs> okay, you wanna push all the way out? There you go. Looks fine to me. Yeah, it doesn't really look super worn. It's got a little bit of scoring in there, but nothing, nothing too bad. Let's see what we got. Like nothing? Also, nothing major there. So this is our crankshaft. And here is our journals for the connecting rod that we had on cylinder, what cylinder was that? I don't recall what cylinder it was, I think two, but um, it's damaged as you can see quite there. This is the other one right here. Oh yeah. And this is the one that's damaged. <laughs> you can see it's quite destroyed. Not even, not even most importantly, the bearing surface, which is important there. But if you look at the edges, if you look how mushed up the edges of this are and how they are not at all like this at all, I guess a machine shop probably could machine some of this stuff out and then you can have to get oversized bearings. Uh, but again, when we talk about cost, that becomes a major concern. You're probably better off replacing the crankshaft. And then when you talk about any of the costs related to any of this stuff, it becomes more cost effective to just throw a use engine in. So there you have it. Damage engine. Damaged crankshaft, damaged connecting rod, spun a bearing, rod knock. Hope you don't have rod knock. Knock, knock. Who's there? Not me. See ya. That's a video. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.